Howdy folks, we're in the garage today. This Today we're gonna do something different again. Always do. <laughs> we're gonna do an experiment. <laughs> yeah, I like experiments. This is gonna be, I, I think we're gonna call this pot puree or something day to day because I'm gonna be make, mixing a couple of different products together to create a situation. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we showed a 3D printer earlier this week, the Little King Rune. It's a real cute little machine. But I wanted to show you, uh, anyone that buys that machine, I want to show you a couple little tips and tricks with the machine. It's just a couple little easy things that will you know, make your life a whole lot easier. But also, we want to run that machine from a power station, which is portable. In other words, we're not going to be running off the house. Oh no, we're going to run off a, a, a power station, which can be charged with solar panels. All power sent us this 200 watt set of solar panels that are portable. And we're gonna set that up with their power station and we're gonna run a 3D printer outside. And we're gonna test a couple things. We're gonna see how long the 3D printer would be capable of running uh, on its own just from the power station, but also I uh, wanna run the power station in, con you know, in conjunction with these panels and see you know, can, we, can everything hold up? Can we charge the station and run the 3D printer? I think we can do all that, but we're gonna do that outside in the driveway because it's like you know it's a hundred degrees out in Texas and I just want to be out there so badly you know for you guys yeah <laughs> I just want you to understand my pain okay so let's go find a work roll around workbench from Vivor and we'll get we'll get started yeah so this is the King Rune uh, K KP 3S machine this one, there's a lot of people complain about how to, they can't change the filament easily or they have a lot of struggle with it. And so I'm just going to quickly show you how you get the bed out of the way here a little bit so you can see it better. The first thing you're going to do is um, turn the machine on. That would be a good start. <laughs> and we're going to change filament. So we're going to go to our little keypad right here and we're going to prick preheat. And then we're going to preheat the nozzle. Let's see if we can close up on that a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can just show you that. Okay. So I've hit preheat and then I'm going to turn the nozzle up to, in this case, uh, we're going to go all the way up to 200 degrees, 200 Celsius is what we're going to do. And I've just punched this in until it hits, whoops, there we go, 200. So right now the nozzle in here is heating up to 200. You're best to change the filament this way because it's just easier. Now I'll show you what's going to happen on top here. So at the top here is extruder, extruder, you've got a little, you know, spring-loaded switch here that helps grab. Anyways, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back here so I can get to my filament. And there's my filament. Now the nozzle is at 200, so I'm going to push down first and get a little bit of the plastic flowing. Then I'm going to pull back. And there go, there it is. It's, it's out. It's, it's good. It's clean. Now, yeah, so to restart, uh, same thing. Just bring your filament in, cut your 45 degree or so on the angle of the filament on the edge, and then push it down through and set this tube back up in here and you're good to go. It, the other thing that I mentioned earlier this week was on these was to put a nut or something under the springs here for spacers. It's a little tricky to do it but it's not hard. I mean just yeah but I added like quarter 20 nuts on all the springs under here. To, it sort of stiffens the bed and it raises the bed and it'll help uh, It'll help you when you're doing your bed leveling up here, and also it'll actually stiffen the bed so you don't lose your settings as easily. I have had this machine sitting right beside me here, this particular King Room, has not had the bed leveled up again for like a year, and it can still run everything off and put the first layer down without any trouble. So that's kind of one of the reasons besides these linear rails here that uh, <clears throat> you know makes this machine so cool. It's uh, once it's set up, if it's set up right, it will run and run and run, which I do love that. Anyway, we got to get outside, get this up on the power station, and see what's going on. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. We're outside, and this is all power. That's a uh, 200 watt panel kit that, that you know you can carry like a suitcase. It unfolds and it gives you multiple different plugs. You can even directly hook this up to like, like your car battery to charge it up while you leave these laying out in the sun. It'll charge a battery pretty quick, I believe, because uh, 200 watts uh, at 12 volts, you know, that's, you're pushing well over 10 amp in, so you're doing a good job of charging whatever it is, but they give you different cables in the kit that will unzip from the back. So it's, the all power 200 watt kit is really a nice kit. In this case, I've got it wired up to my power station. Now the power station is, uh, let's see, we'll get over here for a little bit. 
The power station is kind of low on power right now, but we have the 3D printer out here with us and it's plugged in directly to the power station. Nothing is on just yet, but I'm going to put a project together. We'll fire up the King Rune and then we'll take some readings. Right now the power station is at 50% charge. It's got about 50, 50 more minutes or so. It'll be fully charged. So in the meantime, we're going to start this part up and then take a reading and see how we're doing between these two. Should be really interesting, I think. So the first thing we're going to do right now is we're charging, as I said, and I'm just going to check this and see where we're at. We're at 53%. She's got 44 minutes left, but we're going to go ahead and start this part of the project. Uh, I'm going to turn the AC on. That's for the outlet here on the all power power station. This is a 600 watt beast, so there, there shouldn't be any problem with uh, having enough power to run something. Oh, the King Rune has already been left with a switch on because uh, because of me. Yeah, I did that, so we're good to go. Now, uh, right now we're still at 45 minutes in charging, so now I'm going to turn the King Rune on to start up the project. And let's see. Print. It's really hard to see in the sunlight out here. Interesting. We're probably going to start printing the wrong thing because I can't see. Spool. There it is. Confirmed. All right, let's see if we can get this started. And here we go. All right. And I guess we're going to have a gray spool because that's what I left on the machine. you got to watch that. Sometimes you want a different color. Don't forget to change the, the silly spool out. And this is started up and running. Uh, the bed is starting with this. The heating the bed is probably some of the most juice you actually use on a 3D printer. So I'm going to come back over here and just take a look. Wow. Okay. We are now pulling 160 watts for the King Rune. That's how much power she's taking right now. Uh, 159, and the sun is shining, so theoretically I should have enough. Yeah, right now our input is 154 and our output is 158, so technically we're kind of losing the battle here a little bit with the 3D printer. Surprising. This is one of the smallest, probably one of the lightest printers I have, I guess, on hand. So I really thought this would be able to continue to charge and run the printer at the same time. It looks like right now we're sort of like, uh, yeah, running a 50-50 deal here right now. Uh, of course, if the sun would come out and hit these panels a little better, it wouldn't hurt. Boy, we're so close. We're right on the edge between what's going out and what's coming in for charge. That is amazing. And the project I've decided on, which will run for three hours, uh, at least the three-hour runtime isn't going to be a problem, that's for sure. Let's just... Uh, tell you what we're gonna cut away and come back once this starts the project up and we'll just see if the readings are changing at all okay the project that I've chosen for this is a three-hour project it's making a spool and the spool holder when it's all together will actually act as a feeder spool instead of what we've got over here for the King Rune because I, I find that the filament holder that they use for the King Rune is kind of sketchy anyways uh, the machine is uh, rated at 200 watt and right now just this second I look over here it's showing 47. What's happening is the thermostat for the bed to keep the bed at 60 degrees Celsius is kicking in, kicking out. So when the bed kicks out, we're only drawing about 40, roughly average about 40 watts over here. And although the sun is doing a pretty good job, it's bringing 154. It should be bringing more than that in. I'm just going to change the panels just a little bit, uh, I think, angle. I just move the panels a little bit and it's still running about 154 watts coming in. I was kind of hoping we'd get more than, you know, closer to 200, but we're not. And we're at 50. So right now it's showing it's going to take about 40 minutes to fully charge this up. Now, that's going to go up and down because every time that bed kicks in, it jumps to 178 watts of power that it needs. And it just jumped up for a minute, put some more heat on the bed, then it stopped, and we're back again to around 40, 48 watts in this case. And now we're down to where we only need a um, couple of minutes to fully charge this back up. And uh, all the numbers, everything, are just going up and down right now because that's kicking in and kicking out. Sort of like a refrigerator, but on a much, much faster level because every time the bed gets a little cool, it heats it up, which it just kicked in again. This is kind of fascinating because we can go up to 200 watts, and we do. Uh, King Rune rates this at 200 watt, and I can tell you right now, yeah, it will take up to 200 watts at some point in time. Right now, it's all the way down to 28 watt, but it'll, yeah, it's coming, it's at 28, 29, it's just sort of surging back up, and then the bed kicks in, it's 185 to 200 watt with the bed. The bed is where all the energy is that's used on a 3D printer to sort of keep the bed hot. Everything else really doesn't take that much power. 
So that, I find that kind of uh, interesting. Oh, and this just kicked on, it's getting a little hot. It's 100 degrees out here today in the Texas sun too, which doesn't help. Um, and our charge time kind of is fluctuating in our charge itself. We're at 52%, we're only half charged, but this was part of the experiment I wanted to do. The other thing I wanted to do today was fully charge this and then see how long of it would take to run a project like this on the machine. So when we come back, I think what we'll do is we'll have this fully charged, we'll disconnect the solar panels and run off just this only and see how long it would take to run the King Rune or how long we could run the King Rune for. Should be pretty close to three hours. So far it's been about a half an hour, 45 minutes since we started the project roughly. Uh, we're about 20% complete on the spool I think right now. And this is still doing a slow uh, losing battle. We're at 48% charge and slowly dropping down. Uh, technically if we do the math, this can run without the solar off of this for about three hours and then that's it. I wouldn't want to have a three hour run uh, run time on that and, and expect this to run three hours and think everything should work because you know how that goes. So it's nice to have the solar panels that's helping to reduce the slow easy time that this thing is coming down. So in three hours we'll probably be discharged a little bit more than what we are right now but we're not really losing the battle badly. We're down, uh, we're at 47% charge right now on this and we've already run, like I say, probably just probably a good half hour or so on this thing so far. This is a three hour job, so I think in total it's a pretty cool idea that you know you could run a, a 3D printer in the shade like I'm trying to do right now. I had to move everything over towards the garage door to get out of the sun, but the panels are still out in the sun, <laughs> still sitting nicely out in the sun doing their thing. You know? The all power panel, 200 watt is a nice kit that will help keep this thing and well it'll keep all this running for us so that's a pretty good deal. We also have the 100 amp kit. I was thinking about adding that in as a uh, in a series and say boost this because this can run up to 60 volts. The other mistake I made weeks ago was when we brought this on the show I said something about lithium ion. It is not. This is a lithium uh, iron phosphate uh, battery inside so it's an excellent you know battery for recharge and for like solar power that kind of thing makes it really heavy, but it's a, so much of a better quality. It's not a lithium ion, it's a lithium iron phosphate, which uh, really, sorry about that, I, that was my screw up, but uh, this is by All Power, and when we showed it, it was on sale. I'm uh, really not sure exactly where it's at right now. There's also a charger up here for the phone, so I could be charging my phone while I'm uh, doing all this uh, fun stuff. The uh, fan, unfortunately, is running quite a bit right now, cooling the system because, like I say, it's 100 degrees, it's hot out here. Plus the wind has picked up and it's a hot breeze so that the bed is fighting to keep that 60 degrees Celsius temperature on the bed here which means it draws more power more frequently. I was kind of hoping that we could run a 50-50 balance but it's I can see that it, at least in this conditions today we're going to slowly lose against that. Now if I add that other 100 watt panel the problem with the series circuit is it would be 24 volts in series which this can take up to 60 so that part's cool but then your maximum output theoretically would be 100, 100 watt, which would pull us back. So that would mean that we would get, get up to 240 watts and not the full 300 that we would like to have. Now, if I had Y connectors, I don't know how that would work. I think with Y connectors, that would actually multiply and give us the full 300. Again, I'd have to do a, a quick um, experiment with that to see how that works. It should work. But in series, the problem, now that finally just cut off, that's a good thing. In series, the problem is, of course, the smallest panel, the weakest panel, that's the one you're gonna be, that's gonna control everything. So the 100 watt panel times the 24 volt at that point would be 240 watt max. So we really wouldn't gain a whole lot here. I might do it just for the heck of it, um, just to see what it looks like. But um, this is shut off now, so let's see where we're at. I'll just pull this on and we're, yeah, we're right now, we're at about 30, 30 watts pulling and 152 watts coming in and it's jumping up and down again a little bit because of the bed kicking in kicking off to maintain that 60 uh, de 60 degrees celsius interesting situation here uh but just think off the power of the sun i'm running my 3d printer i kind of like that okay just to see if we could up the game a little bit i went ahead and uh put the other panel out from all power that's a 100 watt panel versus a 200 and I ran them in series. I don't have a Y connector, so I can't parallel. If I could parallel, I could probably boost my output total uh, power pretty good. But 
because I'm unable to do the parallel thing, I did the series wire and what happened was I gained about 10 watts total. The reason is that the 100 is going to hold the 200 back from, you know, full power going through. Also, there is a charge control system uh, or a BMS, I guess we'll call it, on the uh, char this charging station. So it's not going to let too much power come in. So between the two, we gained about 10 watts. So I disconnected the 100 and went back to just the 200 watt. Okay, we're at 70% of the models completed right now, and we're at 38% charge. Like I said, we are very slowly losing against the battle against the, the King Room. <laughs> but even at 38%, we know we, we've got more than enough electrical power to make it through to the end of this model. And then we're going to charge this up. Uh, total charging time will depend on your solar or what it is you're doing, but with the 200 watt panels from All Powers, uh, and this station right here from All Powers, it looks like the charging time from say like a low charge of 20% or something would it take a couple hours, that's all. Which is for recharge, that's great because that's one of the things you really want to know about is can I get out in the sun for a couple of hours and fully recharge this and then start using it again or having it ready for use. So that's an important thing to know. Yep, so we'll check back again in maybe when we're finished the model I think at this point because I think we're doing just fine. Well, the model is finished and it looks like we're done with all that. Uh, I'm going to provide links below in the description for where you can find a great deal on the King Room printer, but also uh, where you can find the All Power Power Station and also the 200 watt uh, portable system. Right now it's charging up, so it's up over 40% already since this, this just finished a few minutes ago. And as soon as this was done, of course, that started charging up and apparently it'll charge up fully in about one hour. So, hey, that's pretty good. It looks to me like it would fully charge in only a couple of hours from zero. So not a bad product from all powers. Also, uh, this spool thing, I'm going to provide a link below if anybody's interested in making one of these because it'll completely replace the spooling uh, system that's on the King Rune. Because there's kind of sketchy. This thing is really nice. I've used it before. So. While we're back in the garage, hey, it's, it's a little bit cooler. It's a little shadier here. <laughs> that sun was chasing me all day while I tried to do that. It was kind of cool. Ran the 3D printer, a 3D printer, which I picked on, and decided to run it off the power station, which is the solar. So basically, the sun made a 3D print today. Kind of cool. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for looking in to see what was going on today. It was a couple of different things happening with different products and I thought it might be interesting to just experiment and just see what we can do with that. Uh, I hate to say it, but you know, for the three hours of print time plus the uh, power station plus the 200 amp or 200 watt panels, that kind of was like the maximum that you should probably do. Uh, you could probably go to a print that was maybe maybe four hours and you could get away with it but that would be like you wouldn't want to go any further than that there's not enough power to carry on further than that i don't know what the answer is to that i think you'd need a <clears throat> bigger power station but all power has bigger bigger power stations that's only the 600 water they have a 1200 and a 1500 i believe anyways Thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and we will get on to other projects. Monday, I think we have something from Beaver that's very exciting. It looks really cool. It would be the first one I've ever had in here, so it would be like, yes, this ought to be interesting. Oh, yes. Meantime, I'm going to try to whew, cool down. <laughs> Over and out.